Okay, we're at section 19.10, uh, the magnetic domains. This is the last section of the chapter. Um, and let's go ahead and share the uh, PowerPoint. Yeah, you can see the current going around a uh, coil S produces a magnetic field. Well, it, let's imagine a little electron in an atom uh, spinning around, orbiting around the uh, its orbit uh, in 10 to the minus 16 seconds. That would produce about 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. Well, that's a very simplistic way of viewing uh, an atom. That's kind of the classical orbiting electron there's more of a probability cloud as to where any electron might be so that doesn't really explain it there are some atoms that have uh they have what are called spin uh and mu uh, uh, mu spin the magnetic uh, spin moment um the uh called the magnetic the electron um electron spin, it's getting into the realm of quantum mechanics and we won't discuss that here, but there are uh, most, uh, in most materials there is spin, but there you, you'll you get spin in one direction, you get spin in the other direction, so it does kind of cancel. But in some materials, um, in some materials there are, um, in such as iron, cobalt, and nickel, the magnetic fields produced by the electron spins don't, they don't cancel completely. And we call these ferromagnetic materials. Uh, so you can see that random orientations of domains in an unmagnetized substance, they're just going ev everywhere. When an external magnetic field B is applied, the domains tend to align with the magnetic field. So you can see that the, the domains are growing and they're kind of all starting to point um, in the same direction. As the field strengthens, domains aligned with B tend to grow larger, while those not aligned grow smaller. And you can see all of the arrows that are kind of pointing uh, to in the, the B field, the green field to the uh, to the right. Um, so as they as as they uh, as the B field increases, the, this um, causes the ferromagnetic material to, to become magnetized. Uh, just like when you, this magnet picks up these uh, paper clips, after a while these paper clips will become magnetized themselves. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, I mean I, I'm sure many of you have tools, a screwdriver or something that uh, really shouldn't be magnetic unless it, it's designed to be for picking up parts, but after a while they do get they do get magnetized. Um, so, uh, uh, so there's different types of magnetic material. Uh, there's a uh, ferromagnetic that like the, uh, iron, cobalt, and nickel. Uh, there's paramagnetic materials that, uh, that tend to align with an externally applied magnetic field, but the response is extremely weak compared to that of ferromagnetic materials. Uh, aluminum, calcium, platinum, uh, those are examples of paramagnetic uh, materials. And a ferromagnetic material, if it's heated up enough to what is called the Curie temperature, uh, it'll, it'll lose any magnetic, uh, uh, magnetic uh, properties that it has. I've even done experiments with... Um, uh, materials, heating them up to see at what point they lose their their magnetism. Their, uh, and, and so if you heat them up, it's no longer magnetic. You lose the domains. A diamagnetic material is uh, in an externally applied field, it induces a very weak magnetization that is opposite to the applied field. Um, that's the this little frog um, is, is actually floating. Ordinarily, diamagnetism isn't observed because paramagnet, 
paramagnetic and ferromagnetic effects are far stronger. In this photo, a very high magnetic field exerts a levitating force on the diamagnetic water molecules in the frog. The frog was not hurt uh, hurt during the uh, experiment. So those are the ferromagnetic, paramagnetic, and diamagnetic materials are the different types of materials. And that, I think, pretty much ends the uh, the chapter, so we'll stop it there.